thank you mr chairman the willingness of republicans to waste taxpayer money to literally fritter it away with one manufactured crisis after another a shutdown a fiscal cliff uh, a default uh, is nothing short of amazing uh, I think what this hearing should do for the American people is to put a giant caution light out there of what lies ahead over the next couple of months. Indeed, it probably rises to the level of being a giant red light to say, stop, don't do this to America and to the American economy and to American families once again as you have done repeatedly. Republicans are simply unable to stand up to their shutdown caucus, and that's where we're headed. I think uh, to be bipartisan about it, we ought to look at what Republicans have said about Republicans on the issue before us today. The former Congressional Budget Office Director, Douglas Holtz Eakin, who's come before this committee a number of times, said this, and I quote, on their own, Republicans cannot pass a debt limit increase, period. They could have a debt limit bill that closed every federal agency, and it would not pass the House. I could not have said it better than what this Republican spokesperson had to say about it. They know that come Halloween, we have reached the debt limit, and yet they are incapable of doing what this Congress voted to do seven times for George W. Bush, 18 times for Ronald Reagan, because they want to force another crisis. These crises are not free. As the staff witness uh, conceded, the Government Accountability Office looked at this same bill when it was passed through this committee before, when we faced the possibility of taking this approach before, and it cost us tens of millions of taxpayer dollars to do what is being proposed today. It cost much more to businesses in the private sector who had their borrowing costs increased, and yet we are repeating the very same thing that did not work, that was costly before, because they cannot say no to the shutdown caucus. To turn to another Republican on this, Tony Fratto, Fratto, back in uh, when we considered this bill in 2013, who was a Bush administration official, said that, quote, prioritization is impossible. Is the government really going to be in the position of withholding benefits, salaries, rent, contract payments in order to pay off Treasury bondholders? There are 80 to 100 million payments per month that the Treasury makes. And this is really saying, pick and choose among those payments and put the folks that hold the bonds, whether they're in Shanghai or Rihad or on Wall Street, ahead of everyone else. Keith Hennessy, a former Bush administration economist, wrote, the first step to becoming a banana republic, it would turn our economy into a bloody mess if we have a default, and that's what is being proposed. This is the Default Cover Act that is proposed here. And what of the effect of telling Treasury, yes, you can borrow more, but you can only pay those bondholders in Shanghai or wherever they may be, and you can only pay on Social Security bonds, but you can't do anything else? Well, as Mr. Rangel indicated, there are some people that invested in America. They invested not by buying a Treasury bond, but they invested with their lives. And I can tell you, representing Military City down there in San Antonio, I've got a lot of veterans who gave their limbs, who gave their lives, whose families have sacrificed, and every one of those people who receives a veteran's disability check is put in a second-class position relative to these bondholders in China or wherever. Uh, we say through this bill, not with my vote, of course, but it is said through this bill, that those veterans who are receiving their disability check, Treasury doesn't prioritize that. It pri prioritizes paying bondholders. Every young person in this country who is investing in this country by getting the education to be able to achieve their full God-given potential and contribute back to our economy, they're investing in America, but they're not a bondholder. 
though they have a big stake in the future of America, and their Pell Grants, they won't be there. And one after another after another Time for the group of Americans are cut out and denied for the by this bill. Expired.